Hello and welcome to Sommer Mestenik. My name is Matthias Kaufmann and I like to show you the parametrization of the RQ30 radar discharge sensor. To connect to the RQ30 you need an RS485 adapter. On the standard cable which comes with the RQ30 please connect the yellow cable to the A canal and the grey cable to the B canal of the RS485 adapter. Please connect it to your laptop, to the USB port and then open the RQ Commander Modeling. On the Parameter tab in the top right window you find the communication settings. For the RQ30 please leave the standard settings. What you have to do is to check for the COM port. So please press check and the COM finder opens and in my case I use the USB nano converter and that one is connected to COM 11. So please select it and press confirm. Make sure that the right COM port is switched to the yeah, to the to the finding of the COM finder and then press connect here on the terminal window. If a cursor starts blinking in the terminal window then you are connected successfully to the RQ30. You can also say it up here. Uh, the RQ commander says you are connected. You may also type three question marks then the terminal window or the terminal menu of the RQ30 opens. This uh, menu allows you to do some quick settings or it's just to prove that you are connected correctly with the RQ30. I leave it with an X. If you have troubles getting connected, uh, like funny characters or anything like that, uh, it might have happened that you mixed the A and B canal on the USB converter so maybe you have to change that or please check the baud rate and make sure you have no parity and one stop bit with a handshake on and no X on X off. So the first thing uh, when you are connected is to download the parameter file from the sensor. So please select load parameters. This will take a few seconds if you connect for the first time to a sensor you also have to download the schema that may take a bit longer. Uh, the schema and the parameter file contain the complete menu structure of the sensor. Therefore your RQ commander is backward compatible with older summer sensors. So the schema only needs to be uh, transferred for the first time afterwards you just load the parameters. So then the th second thing or actually the, the first thing once you've loaded uh, the menu structure is to adjust the decimal and units. This is always the first thing I do because very often you forget about it. So please go to techniques and select units and decimals and make sure these units here they are the same as you used in your profile. So the profile which we created in our last video uh, used meters and I want uh, level information uh, with three decimals meaning uh, in millimeters. I want uh, the velocity in meter per seconds with three decimals and my discharge shall be calculated in cubic meter per seconds with two decimals. So the next thing is that we want to download the profile which we created last time or in our last video to the sensor. So go to the profile tab, select open profile, locate your, your profile in our case that's the sample profile, press open, then make sure uh, the radar position is the actual final radar position at the site. Uh, check your discharge table. The best is if you switch to the second tab where you can see actually only the selected points. In my case uh, I've selected 12 points. That's plenty. Uh, you can select up to 16 points. 
If this is all correct, we go back to the parameter tab and press send discharge table to download this profile information to the sensor. This again takes a few seconds. Okay, it's done. Now you can find the discharge table here in the, in the menu discharge table. The next step uh, in configuring the RQ30 is to adjust the level. Let's have a look back at our profile. Let's assume we have a, a water level of 2 meter. You have either two options. You have a, either a stage plate measuring the water level from the bottom up. That's easy, giving me a water level of 2, day, two meter. Or you measure from your reference point, which is zero, you measure down. And in this case, that would be half a meter. And this half meter, you have to dis deduct from the total depth, which is 2.5 meter. So resulting is a two meter water level. Please make sure that this level is in relation, or that the level which you key in now is in relation to your profile. That's the most common mistake which happens in site installations. So to adjust the water level, uh, go back to the parameter file, select level and press adjustment. So now the RQ30 measures the, the actual water level. In this case, you know, it's coincidentally correct. We have today a water level of two meter, press two, return. You've seen that uh, uh, the two appeared twice. That's a keyboard echo. You can disregard that. It's actually if you open the uh, terminal you see that I keyed in only uh, this two. Good. To, ch to test uh, the water level uh, please press test now. And now the RQ30 performs a measurement. You can see the distance from the sensor to the water surface is 1.3 meter and the measured water level now is exactly 2 meter. The fixation level of the RQ30 is calculated automatically so please don't change that. You can set some special levels like maximum level, low level border or flow stop level uh, Please refer to the manual for the correct meaning of, of these settings. Next step is to adjust the velocity parameters. First is the view direction. We always recommend to look upstream with the sensor. That's uh, in this case you can easy blank out uh, rainfall if you have, re have really heavy rainfalls in your area. Then uh, this is the better option. If you have to look downstream, then please change it to downstream. Whatever is uh, correct for your site. The possible flow direction, uh, usually it's just downstream. However, if you are close to the sea and you want to measure the tide effect or if your river may also flow uh, upstream, then uh, you have to select two. Otherwise, you leave it to downstream. River inclination you can leave at zero, pivot angle we don't need as well. The pivot angle would be if you don't look perpendicular uh, on the water surface. Then please set the measurement dura uh, duration. As a default value I always set it to 30 seconds. If your signal quality is rather poor, that means if you have a very flat surface then you can increase uh, this value to 60 or 90 seconds. Uh, above 90 or above 120 seconds, you can't really improve the measurement, uh, then you really reach the limit. Theoretically, I believe you can set 240 seconds for the velocity measurement. If you want to flatten your signal, you can set the number of filter values. 
uh, I usually use uh, three filters or three measurements uh, and a moving average or a medium average. Um, that means uh, the RQ30 builds uh, an average velocity uh, over the last three measurement, uh, three measurements, and, and that flattens the signal a little bit or reduces the noise. The last thing, the last thing uh, you have to set is the measurement interval. Um, could be 60 seconds. Typically, it is 300 seconds. You can trigger uh, the RQ30 through the external uh, trigger input, or you can trigger it through SDI 12. However, I leave it at uh, interval. If I, if you change a value in the menu, you can see that uh, it gets highlighted in pink. Um, if you press modify, uh, send modified parameters, it downloads all the changes which you've done offline to the sensor. And as you can see now, that the pink color disappears. That means uh, that's the actual setting now in the RQ30. Now to check your velocity, you can switch to the spectrum. And if you have such nice peaks like we've got here, then you have a perfect sight and your settings are completed. So congratulations. These are all basic settings and your RQ30 is now up and running. If you have any further questions or if you need technical support, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you for your attention.